All right, here we are at this oil pump drain plug. I wasn't comfortable with those torque settings, so I changed it down to 85 because there really is no torque specs on that. And you could torque it more, but since I put this uh, number 22 or the uh, Loctite 222, this stuff isn't bad, this Harbor Freight uh, 22. If you let it dry, shake it up first. All right, now that we set this at 85 inch pounds, make sure you use the right side. It's the side on the back, and it's hard to read. It's very hard to read, in fact. It starts at like 81, so you have to add four. So because I set these, I believe, at uh, 84, I set this at 85 because it's a different size bolt. I believe it's uh, six millimeter, so you could set it at the six millimeter, but I still wasn't comfortable with that. So since I put this stuff on, I felt more comfortable with that. So this one right here, because we're using the three eighths, it's a 17 millimeter socket, and it's set at 16.5 pounds. This is the oil drain plug. And we can just probably take that off. And now watch. But not very much as you thought. So we don't want that coming out. Now we're going to move to the um, this is actually the oil cool that goes on the front of the uh, block of the motor. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but this O-ring is pretty compressed. So to re-put it on there isn't really a good idea without adding a brand new genuine oil cooler O-ring. That, by the way, we're going to do that now, too. Okay, so this is the oil cooler. And my thesis here on um, what I've gathered from retorquing that bolt is that uh, Watts, Norm, Abram on this old house, you know, double check, triple check. And that's what you want to do, go back. If you're not comfortable with something, go back and recheck it and do it right. So don't move along really fast. Remember, it's not somebody else's motorcycle and you're not on piece rate or whatever they call it. Flat rate, that's what it's called in the mechanic world. So here's a good chance to grade yourself as a teacher. First turn on your headlight, which nobody really wants to buy, even though they're all buying them because they're far superior than their lights, you can see, look. Yep, yeah, the light's on, it's broad daylight, sun's out. See, you can even go to the dim stage. But, you know, see that came out very easy. And it's flat. So, we use these special tools that you buy that are kind of weird. When you buy them, you don't think you have any use for them. But you go, geez, a buck for the whole set. It must come in handy someday. And they did. So you want to check these when you remove them. You know. But you've done a good job without nicking them. Because any nicks or anything, uh, you go from an A plus to an E minus. Okay, there is no in between. <laughs> I'm serious, that's why it's so funny. You think that you can cheat or something, and you can't. So, now, obviously, can't you figure something out? That there's probably dirt in there. So, so what I got is this brush here, but I guess a toothbrush would work just as good. And make sure you washed it in your sink first with soap and water. And you can see it takes all that grime out of there. For seat in the new seal because you don't want dirt on top of your seal it's just extra weird and that really do it nice 
get this and fold the rag. I find out that these mechanic rags at Harbor Freight are so cheap they're well worth keeping a nice clean rag around and trying to keep something like, you know, this thing around that's soaked in all kinds of dirt. So, yes, now we can use this stuff what it's really intended for and that's to seal the rubber o-ring see to do that you just go around it like that so it's fully saturated with this stuff if you don't put this stuff on you just don't know what you're doing like I said before and spin it to spread it around even and there she is brand new o-ring also at this time I purchased this uh, uh, bolt kit off. I think it's a 2009 for 15 bucks on eBay. So these were the bolts we were going to use, but they were all like, see how dirty they are? They were all white. Yeah, you can see some of the whiteness. So what I did was, the next best thing, if you didn't buy one of those, somebody stripped one down and put the bolt in a package and sold you the whole nut and bolt kit on eBay for 15 bucks. You can soak them with this stuff. This stuff here is the best. And then again, you really don't want to use stainless steel. Because stainless steel, look that up on Google too. Google has the knowledge of everything today. So you don't want to use stainless steel even though these look like stainless steel. They're not because stainless steel into aluminum is uh, not very comfortable. You know? They don't get along together well. They start what's called, I believe, galvanic action. So these, look at that. They're nice and clean. Almost like new. So almost right here is $8, at least $10 worth of freaking bolts if you buy them from Suzuki. So already the, the kit, all the extra bolts paid for themselves because I really don't want to stick this crap in. And you can see they have blue Loctite on them. Duh. And this set has blue Loctite on them. So, it's from the factory that demands it. So, the people that would say, Oh, then you know you're not supposed to use that stuff. I'd suggest you get another mechanic to work on your bike, or you do it yourself. But, yeah, we're not using the number 22. We're going to use the, the blue it's called today. See that? Blue. <laughs> yeah, because... We like OEM quality. Now we'll just put the cap back on this so we don't lose it. That seems to be what I do a lot. Lose that cap and spend like hours when, you know. And speaking of spending hours, I know you have that problem. So if you want to go out and buy a set of these little pouches to put everything in, you won't lose it. Then you can take a magic marker and label it like uh, like I did with this. See, I took that O-ring, because I have other O-rings, and uh, we all know what that is then, see? Sure, it's zip. You can look it up on Google, 09280-64003, uh, and it all comes out the same, oil color. <laughs> But you might want to type Suzuki and then that number, and you'll see. Here's the oil filter, which we're going to put on next. So that's the oil cooler, and this is the oil filter. Also, we took some more of this stuff here, and we uh, just smeared a coat over that. Also, we took this rag here, and wiped this all down, and felt for like any sort of dirt. You know, from leaves or whatever, it hits the front of the motor. It just gets in there somehow. So it's every, each coating is flush. Also, we noticed that now with the new O-ring, it sticks up. You can actually probably, you can see it sticking up, see? So we're going to get a good seal. So where, like I said, all things are related to everything. There's a lot of people that are going, what are they freaking... Water pumps leaking, you know, and yeah, well, you know why? 
because for some stupid reason this gasket only costs like three bucks and this smaller gasket of the same sort you know it's about this size that you put on the inside costs like 15 bucks you know it makes no sense so that's probably why it's leaking because I didn't change mine either <laughs> I'm not spending 15 bucks unless it does leak so if it leaks I'll just have to take them two screws out again and put a o-ring and also this 1800 aluminum headlamp is way too bright as you can see you know a headlight on a car is only uh, 1200 so let's dim it down to at least the low beams on your car but you might not be able to see as well as me when I'm directly shining because it's like whitewashing the film out but for me I'm telling you, it's the way to go so we got these screws from this kit see nice and shiny they are compared to the ones I showed you before so we're just going to pour some of this blue on there see see how it whitewashes it <laughs> and because that's with the factory make sure you shake it up first and it looks like the factory put a nice coating on there so now we check this thing make sure there's no dirt on it so the way to put this on is get this five millimeter t-wrench get a whole set at Harbor Freight if you don't have the money you know I just put that on there put this at the 12 o'clock in the 9 o'clock position and start them yeah so get this one again you can see they really love their lock tight on these mm -hmm. and that one went in pretty easy and see we make sure we put a lot of that stuff on there <clears throat> and then we put this right in here You know, that one was kind of difficult to start. See, we got lots of it on there. It's okay, get it all over your fingers. This one, we're using what I call the braille technique because I can't see either what I'm doing. But see how messed up they are? And see how fast this T wrench goes. Obviously, then we go corner to corner like this when we tighten practically everything to the point where you just pretty well don't need to read too much of those directions. They're all about the same. And don't tighten it too tight because it only calls for like seven pounds. <laughs> That's why they want you to put the Loctite on there. So you can see, there we go. Yeah. So yeah, they... This uh, bolt kit that I got for 15 bucks was well worth it. <laughs> so now we convert to this socket 5mm. Side 5mm socket cap bolts and we went with eight pounds Let's see if that does anything nope didn't do anything we went with eight pounds because of the plus or minus accuracy okay. so it's all good went with that because you can see the Loctite's actually interfering too. So we don't really... And then we go back here, recheck everything again, 
make sure we got them all. Oh, mostly what you're trying to do is make sure everything's perfectly the same. And Yep, they're all the same. Then we get a nice, pretty, well, almost still clean rag and wipe off that blue crap. And now we'll take the rag while we got it and work on the oil filter. Okay, and that is just perfectly clean. I mean, it's perfect. See that? I don't know if you can, but uh, I can. Now to do the oil filter, here it is. Okay, it's a factory oil filter. Tokyo. Oh, you could use one of these brands, but uh, you see, uh, they got some kind of weird flat thing that. Uh, and they also got all this extra stuff that's really not warranted, like Tough Garden um, Teflon in it. And I saw that Teflon stuff, they don't even want you really using it. Nope, that's bad stuff. You don't want to stick no Teflon in your motor or in your gun, really. Bad. Bad. Just somebody, you know... Whatever they say, they want to say it, and so then you just take that cover off when you're ready to do it. Again, because this is an O-ring. It should come right up, see? It's an O-ring, and I like to pull them right out. And then when I pull them out, I'll take some of this stuff again, and... Since I can't put the camera up, I'll have to schmutz it up in the air for you. See? That way you get both sides. See how I'm doing the flat side? So it's not really an O-ring. It's like an X-ring on those mo new motorcycle chains. Yeah. So now that I did both sides, I might not be able to show you this because... Not real easy sticking back in once you pop it up. No, nope. that's why they don't do that. But I'm going to pop it back in because I can. But in case you was wondering, I was able to do that by just using my special spatula tool. See, and it was back in. So without my special. I get five of these for a dollar, and I think they probably went up to 12 bucks too, like that other stuff, when people realize how valuable they are. But it's not sharp. Nope, see? I cut my wrist! <laughs> so now we stick this on there, that everything's clean. And just for extra measure, you just gotta love this stuff. I know you'll see a lot of my backpacker friends to follow me here, even though I don't backpack anymore. I quit it. Now that I found out they're just a bunch of know-it-all yuppies. They pretty well make everybody sick. I don't follow them anymore, but they still got to follow me. And now they're going to tell me how to build an engine. Uh, could you tell them this is what they try to say? You shouldn't stick oil on an O-ring. Geez, you know, because we yuppies, we know you shouldn't, you know, see this Coleman stove, and it wasn't even rubber, it was a, it was a leather, you know, everybody knows the pumps on the Coleman's leather. I'm telling you, they're dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. So then you just spin that on by hand and you're done. Now, contraire, more fair, you have to buy one of these. This kind right here. Why that kind? And this is, I believe, 68. Yep, see, it says 68. And it was like three bucks on, uh, I'm going to be not politically correct again on eBay. And I'll give you, everybody got their hands up. Who knows what, where it was made? Hmm? 
Yeah, who knows? You were correct. That's where it was made. Yeah, right there. Sure. Remember, you're not politically correct. So now we'll just stick this on there. 68. The problem with 68 is, see how sloppy it is? I did buy the 67, and it's so tight you have to top it off with a hammer. So we're going to try the 68 so we don't have to top it off with a hammer. Uh, right there. See, I'm telling you, that's hard to see. So I stopped. It's 14.5 pounds. So let's see. Oh yeah, there was a lot more than just what you thought by hand, wasn't there? See, it's 14.5, maybe a little more. It's probably why they want you to be so particular with the 0.5. So there, as you can see, the 68 is the preferable size to use. Not 67. Like I said, you have to hammer it off. But I'd show you. I mean, really hammer that sucker on there and off. Yeah. So now, you might want to clean all that... Uh, Old number seven silicon grease that's highly dielectric off there. So, what should we move to now? The disc brake? Yes, we should. But yeah, it's rubby, rubby. Three men in a tubby. See, nice and clean. And what's really nice is if they had like a place to mark it at 7,500 miles, so you know that you changed it. Yeah, so that's good. This is awesome. See, that's where the water cooler goes for the air, for the uh, radiator, so it's definitely an oil cooler. Weird, and I polished it up some. I polished the whole front of this engine up. It was completely crudded up. You'll see them on eBay a couple, I mean on uh, eBay, <laughs> what the hell? On YouTube, you'll see them where they clean them up. This thing was all calcified, whatever you want to call it, with all this white garbage. I was able to clean it up with a couple applications of this uh, Loctite aluminum jelly cleaner and brightener. You have to work fast with it because by the time you apply it, then you got to scrub it. It just doesn't do its job sitting. So you need something like a scrub brush, toothbrush, or something and scrub in it. And it will brighten it up pretty good. Considering that was all that pitted white crap, like I was telling you, the bolts. You have to understand this guy here, you know, he drove this thing. He bought it up in Alaska because that's where he was stationed, Watson. And what he did was he had another idea what the hell he wanted to do or he would have bought a dirt bike. So rather... Then be stationed up there. I guess on his leave, he took off and drove all the way down here to, um, you know, the northeast uh, of the United States on it. And that's what he wanted it for. But while he was up in Alaska, I guess he got a lot of the salt and calcium on it from the calcium they do the roads with now. And it just blasted from the front tire here. You know, it puts like a rooster tail right off the bottom here and sprays the whole front of the motor. It's horrible. It's a horrible thing. But also, that confirmed it. You can see some of it right over here, a spot I missed. But, you know, that confirms, like, this header. Because the header was hot. So if you let your exhaust warm up in your car, you won't need to replace it every other couple years. You just start the car and then leave for work. Heat that exhaust system up before you leave, and you'll see the header wasn't even rusted out. Because, you know, it was warm, hot. So there's another thing that you might want to know, you know, that'll help you save money. But yeah, that's about all we're going to do today. I might do that disc break. What the hell? 